If you're gonna start a video production company in 2023, then you need to consider these five things. The first is brand image. What are clients gonna think about your business? Are they gonna take you seriously? The next is sales strategy. So how you are gonna actually make sales in order to grow your business. Third is going to be a marketing strategy to attract new clients into your business. Then it's a support network. By the end of this video, you're gonna be so busy with brand new customers that you're going to need a support network to help you fulfill those projects and finally number five is your vision and your positioning and we're going to help you develop a roadmap for 2023 to make sure it's the best year ever so make sure you grab a notebook and watch until the very end of this video because we're going to be breaking down those topics into multiple sections covering how to find clients what actually to say to them how to make sure your business looks fire how to land those clients and attract new clients how to develop a wider network and also how to create your roadmap that keeps you accountable that makes sure you can get more clients and ultimately hit your goals if you're new to the channel then my name is ross welch and i own a video production company and within a few years i went from a desk in my parents living room to smashing through multiple six figures in revenue having a studio and a team of people work on major projects all over the world for some major clients and the best thing is i now teach people as part of my academy to start video production companies and everything i show you in this video today are tips that have helped us grow to that next level and get to where we are today so you can copy that and have some success for 2023 so let's kick things off with brand image now brand image is really important because it's ultimately how potential businesses and potential clients see your business. Do they take you seriously? Do you look like the type of person that I want to invest my money with? And if you don't have this, which when you're starting out is a really tough thing to have everything in place, then unfortunately it means that your customers are going to favor other production companies and other competitors rather than just come in to you. And this is something that's become increasingly more important and throughout 2023 is going to be a key factor in you growing your business to the next level. And this is something when I started out that I completely neglected because I didn't know anything about it. I had an email address that was perspectivestudiosuk uh, at gmail.com. Before that I had rosswelch.tv at hotmail.com or something like that and I just think why wouldn't have people have taken me seriously my website was completely rubbish it had loads and loads of text didn't really show much of my work or anything like that and it was it's amazed me that people invested some of their money with me and I can only assume it's because I was very cheap at the time so the risk of their investment was relatively low and that's where people who are just starting out are actually in a really good position because you're gonna be cheaper than perhaps me or other companies out there. So as long as you can provide a good quality service, then my investment of a couple hundred dollars or whatever with you is gonna be way less risky than investing it with someone who is charging a thousand dollars, but perhaps their website and stuff doesn't look so good. And your brand image is going to make your sales process so much easier because if they land on your website and they really like it and you look professional, and then they email you and you tell them the price of the video, they're gonna be pleasantly surprised that they're gonna be getting this value, that perceived value in your work for, you know, significantly lower amount than perhaps that they were expecting. So brand image is really important. And I'm gonna give you some tips now to go through this that means that you can up your level for 2023. So my first tip is you need to get a proper email address. There's no doubt about it. You can't be having a Gmail or Hotmail or Outlook email address at this day and age. You need to have a proper one. The way you do that is you go to somewhere like GoDaddy and purchase a domain name. That will be your business name. And then you go to Gmail and you sign up for their G Suite account account or their uh, yeah, professional account which allows you to use that domain name as an email address so you could have your name at businessname.com co.uk or .com or something like that. It makes you look so much more professional and something that's really undervalued is how seriously clients will take your business. Having a phone number isn't really that important. When I started out, I thought it would be really important in order to look like a bigger business to have a, a landline, someone where they can phone the area code and phone you rather than having a mobile. Nowadays, that's not really that important. You can have a mobile at the bottom of your um, website 
Or you might want to consider having a virtual assistant. You can find a virtual assistant on somewhere like Fiverr or Upwork or People Per Hour, something like that. And that will really help you look like more of a legit business. And I'll talk about uh, why that's so important in just a second. But just think about having your phone number at the bottom of the page or some kind of contact form is really important. Along with your email address, make sure you develop a really nice email signature that sits at the bottom of your emails. Later on in this video, I'm actually going to show you some email templates that you can send to businesses when you're trying to get more work and you'll be able to see what my email footer or signature looks like then as well but just by doing these little things that might be obvious maybe you've already got them in place or maybe you haven't but they're gonna be make or break things for a lot of clients because if I feel uncertain in the business that I'm going to invest my money in I'm probably not gonna invest my money there. So it's about doing all of these things to make you look more legit. And again, I'm gonna give you some tips about this later, but my main point, for anyone who's starting out, whether you're starting out as a freelancer or you're developing a videography business or wanna have a video production company, a video production company is just how you position it. If you have your website and it talks like a video production company would, and you have a proper email address that isn't your name, uh, you know, Ross Welch Media, uh, dot com or something like that having a business name will make you seem bigger and it gives you lots of opportunities down the line so when you grow your team they don't expect you they expect your team because you're a production company and that doesn't matter that for now it's just you and your own i know lots of london agencies that are just one or two people and they subcontract everything so arguably you could be like well they're not a production company or they're not an agency but they are, it's just how you position it. So don't let that put you off. And there's lots of perks to setting up as a production company because you're not limited to the, the amount of work that you can take personally if you're doing it as a freelancer. And you can still do freelance stuff, you just can do it white label, which means you won't be using your production company name, you'll just use your own name. And something that's gonna help with that positioning is having a really good website. So on your website, at the very top, it should say instantly what you do. It should tell the viewer when they land on it, I'm in the right place. Then throughout the rest of the website, you're just building up that trust and credibility. So you're going to include your portfolio, you're going to include what you're good at, maybe some client testimonials to back up that work, and then you're gonna include a contact form at the very bottom. By having a nicely laid out website, and think about the terminology that's used as well. If you're positioning as a production company or as a freelancer, what do you need to get across? And maybe you wanna have a look at some competitors in your industry, but this overall builds up that brand image that's going to be so important when people are doing their research on you and finally for brand image that brings me on to your portfolio and I'm going to give you a really good strategy in the next little topic here about sales um, but your portfolio is your your golden nugget is the thing that is so valuable to your business if you don't have a portfolio right now and I'm going to give you some tips for that so just hold on for a second but if you don't have a portfolio it's going to be extremely hard to get work because people are going to have to trust that you can do a good job and they're simply not going to know if you can or not the same way as if you're trying to grow your business and you're trying to get one thousand two thousand five thousand ten thousand dollar video projects you need your work to reflect that. And we're at a really interesting point in my business at the moment where we're trying to break into that next uh, bracket, that next pricing bracket where we're dealing with big, big projects. And we're figuring out how to do that. And really what it comes down to is exactly what I'm saying to you guys now, which is we need to improve the quality of our portfolio. Realistically, when I look at competitors who are landing 50K projects and I look at our work, it's not the same. So I need to focus on increasing our portfolio and there's a few ways that we are, are working on doing that because that way I can then show my work to a client that looks like it's worth a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand dollars or whatever, they'll be in agreement. They'll be able to see the value that's provided there. It's very hard to show someone a video that looks like it's only worth $100 and be trying to charge them $1,000. So it's a case of not running before you can walk, focus on your portfolio, and that leads me really nicely into the next part of this video, which is going to be about your sales strategy. 
So now you've got your brand image sorted out and you're looking more like a professional business, someone that's trustworthy and I would entrust doing a video project for me. Then it moves into how do we actually attract those clients in the first place and how do we actually make that initial sale? And this is something that a lot of filmmakers struggle with so much. I see this all the time with members who join my academy and they're starting out and they say they're all super talented and, and for me, it's like, wow, like some of these guys are, are so much more talented than I am. And that really inspires me, but they're struggling to get their business to work. And that's because it just comes down to sales. It's something that on the whole, most of us aren't very good at because we're really good at being creative. And when you're creative, you talk creatively, but you need to understand that the business owner you're talking to might not be a creative person. They might not be able to visually see what you're talking about. And you need to understand how their business model and structure works as well in order to make a better sale. So this, is, this topic has got loads of value in it that I'm gonna share with you. And linking it back to the portfolio that I was saying about a moment ago, if you're just starting out and you're looking to start a video production company over 2023, then something you should really think about is doing a free to fee model. Now, what that effectively is, is you go into some businesses and you offer to do a free video for them. Now, free videos get a lot of bad rep. There's a lot of people saying you shouldn't do anything for free. You should know your worth and so on and so forth. And I think that's complete lies. I don't know anyone that doesn't do free videos when they want to expand to that next level. Or perhaps for us, if we want to move into a new market, let's say we want to start doing stuff in food and beverage. We don't have much of a portfolio in food and beverage. So we're going to go and do some projects for free or at least for very cheap. Now, when you're starting out, you're in a great position because you can do that and you can build up a really strong relationship. Business is all about relationship building. And when you're starting out, by doing those free uh, projects for, for clients and building up relationships with them, those relationships are so valuable and they take you so far and you'll learn so much about how to operate a business and how to deal with businesses as well. And if there's no money involved, it takes that element of pressure off. So that's why we call it free to fee because you're starting to build a, a relationship with a client and that's when you can say to them, you know, have you got any more video uh, projects in mind? Maybe we can do this. Next time we would obviously charge for it, but you know, now you've seen the quality of our work, etc., etc. And you can also do this just to start out cheaply. If you're, if you're starting, just charge something. I've got a member in the academy. I was on a call with them. Uh, and we do group mentoring sessions. And uh, I was speaking to him last week. And uh, he said he just landed his first client for $500, which was really exciting. And then he had a business call with someone the next day. And he panicked. And he told them it was going to be $1,000. Because he already had converted a client from the... Uh, the free model into paid for projects. So the next client he spoke to, he went a bit high with it. Uh, I don't yet know if he's actually landed that, but he said they seemed really, uh, they weren't put off by it. They said they just had to go and check the numbers their end, which is exciting. It's a really cool space to be. And he's just kind of testing the water, but without that portfolio, would never have had the opportunity to do it. So portfolio is key. And it, for sales strategy, think about using the free to fee model. So how else could you possibly bring work into your business? Now, 2023 is going to be the year for networking. And trust me when I say this, we've had a whole disturbance of just everything, economic, uh, pandemics, all of these things have been going on. And now is the time that we're starting to see businesses connect and they want to be face to face. They want to be back out there speaking to people and they don't want to be just doing everything digitally. People are looking for those personal connections. And if you can capitalize in 2023 on going to networking events and networking with local businesses, you're going to be able to capitalize on that because that's what people are actively looking for. Myself, I've started networking and we started to see a good return on that as well, as well as many other people that I've spoken to. So start looking at networking events that you can attend and start to sell your services within those groups. With that said, referrals are also going to be a key focus for 2023. Referrals have always been so important. And when I speak to a lot of successful businesses, 
when they're growing, generally it always grows through referrals. So if you already have a couple of clients, I suggest you reach out to them and say to them, is there anyone that you know that could benefit from our services? And would you mind putting us in touch? Because that's gonna be a great connection. Also think about your immediate network, friends, family. Do you know anyone that has a business uh, or that could refer you? Because it's really important to think about it's not who you know, it's who they know as well. Which is why when you go to networking events, it's really important. It's not about who you're networking with in the room and those local businesses, but do they have friends and family who have other businesses that might be able to help you or might want your services? So it's always about looking at that wider network. So there's two sales strategies that I really want to put some light on that are gonna help you land some new clients. The first is going to be talking about leads. How do we actually find these people to contact in the first place? And the second is going to be, what do we actually say when we found these people? So I'm gonna show you some email templates as well. But first of all, let's head over to the computer. I'll quickly show you how we find some leads and some tactics that you can use to grow your business. So the reason I start off with this strategy is because it's free to do so. It does take a little bit longer, but I will show you exactly how we do this. And I did this for years and years. So let's say you're based over in California. This works for anywhere in the world, by the way. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom into the Mac map to a, a geographical location. Normally, if you focus on local businesses, you're gonna have a much better chance of success because you're local, you can invite them in for a chat or you can go and see them, etc., etc. So I would focus on local businesses when trying to grow your own production company. So you're gonna pick an area and then you're gonna simply type in uh, the line of work you do. So for instance, construction company or fitness company or what kind of stuff would you like to do? What kind of work would you like to work in or what do you already have a track record in? Answer those questions yourself and then we do a quick search. So let's do a construction company for, for argument's sake. And that lists all the construction companies within this area. So I'm then gonna simply go through this left-hand side and I'm gonna open these all up into new tabs. Uh, and I would do this for absolutely everyone on this list. Now, what's also worth knowing is if you move around a little bit or zoom in a bit more, new ones do pop up, but go through and you can quickly find hundreds of leads. So let's go over to these guys, uh, LEK Enterprises. Um, and what I'm looking for now is just a contact email address. Email address generally is the one that we focus on to begin with. If you feel confident enough, pick up the phone, maybe ask for the marketing managers or the owners or the person who would deal with video production inquiries. Um, however, I generally personally will always go down the email route first. If they don't reply to some emails, I would then um, uh, phone them up. So we have an info at uh, email address here. Info at can be a little bit hit or miss. I know that actually a lot of construction companies do use info at, even the main owner of the business will, will have access to that. Um, generally speaking, I like to quite find ones that's specific to the person I'm looking at. So I might utilize LinkedIn. I might type in LEK Enterprises and see who works there by using my LinkedIn account. Once I've figured out who the owner is, I'll then do a Google search, searching for the owner followed by you know LEK Enterprises and uh, then I'll, I'll find their email address. Um, so if not, we'll use that as an example. Uh, let me just have a quick look at another page. So we've got um, LB Construction. So contacts, let's go general questions. Is there anything on here? No, nope, they've just got a form to be submitted. So nothing on here. I could maybe uh, look into a little bit deeper with some of uh, these. I might try to go to Google and type in to see if they've released any um, blogs or anything like that that might include an email address. What you can see though from all of these websites, by the way, and if you're living uh, in this particular location, then I'd definitely reach out to these guys. There's no videos on here and the websites are very, 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 very basic. Now. If I was going to uh, come to these people and actually because I wanted some construction services, does this look like a trustworthy website that's worthy of me investing lots of money into? Mm, probably not. So in which case, if they had a really nice brand video on there, is that gonna elevate their perceived value? Is that gonna make them look like more of a professional company? 
Yeah, of course it is, right? So you know you can provide value to these people. It's just making sure that they can see the value as well. And they'll be able to see the value if you've got some previous examples in your portfolio that you can showcase to them, which is why I was saying that that's important as well. This is the last one I'll have a look at just so uh, this doesn't become super long. I'll just go to contact us and um, they don't have anything particular here. Oh, we've got estimating careers accounting. Okay, in which case I would just, again, have another little look on LinkedIn, try and find the right person. Sometimes under our team, we can find uh, more people. So we know that uh, Jerry is probably a good person to talk to. Any of these people up here is, uh, I wondered if there was a marketing manager. Um, we've got object operations team. These are just all dealing with the operations, accountancy, no, okay. So really, we're gonna to want to walk, uh, we're gonna to want to talk to one of these people, and lo and behold, I actually accidentally clicked on that, so that's hilarious. Um, they've got an email address right under here. So if I just go back a page, let's see if Jerry's got an email address. He does. Here we go, Jerry at this company here. So I would then drop Jerry an email address here. So that then begs the next question of once you've got a database of all of these email addresses, what do you actually say? So let's jump into the next part, which is what to say in an email outreach format. All right, awesome. So we've put Jerry's email in here. Now I'm actually not gonna email Jerry because I don't live in California. Sadly, I'm in the UK, uh, but this is exactly the same process as what I would do. So subject line. I try and keep this as vague as possible um, because you don't wanna give the game away. You want them to open it. So I might just say um, something like question for Jerry. Uh, or I could say something like uh, website video dot 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 because Jerry could be thinking um, is, that a, is there a problem with my website? It's something to spark a little bit of imagination and actually in my academy we were all talking about this, we have a, a members group and we were all talking about the best subject lines that have worked for other people and these were a few things that had come up as well. So yeah, something vague like website video, something that really generates a bit of curiosity is going to make him want to open it and not just put it in a spam box or he knows that he's being sold to already. So now we go into the main body uh, here, the text of the email. And you'll notice here's my footer or my signature at the bottom. I was saying this about your brand image. This is why it's important because you'll look a little bit more legit rather than saying sent from my iPhone or uh, not saying anything at all. Um, it's nice to have something that looks a little bit more professional at the bottom. This isn't the most creative by any means. I'm sure you can do a much better job, but you get the idea. So I would say, hi, Jerry. And this is why it makes sense if you know the person's name as well. It makes it so much more personal. Uh, Jerry, if I can spell your name right. Hi, Jerry. Now, we don't want to sell anything in the first email. We just simply want to find out, is Jerry interested in our services? Because if he's not, I could be wasting my time. I can try and do all the convincing in the world, but really, Jerry, do you want a video for your website? Are you, are you interested in having that chat? So I'm gonna keep this super short. And where a lot of people go wrong when they're starting out, and in particularly over 2023, people aren't gonna have time for this. They wanna get going, right? So you wanna keep it short. Don't explain your whole life story. Just keep it to the point. So I might say something like, hi, Jerry. Um, a nice little icebreaker sometimes. So you might wanna have a look through the website. I noticed that you just won an award for this, or I noticed you just did this, or I hope you had a good weekend, at least at a minimum. So we'll go with this. I, I hope you... Um, yeah, okay, maybe I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We'll go with that just because Google's thrown, thrown it in there. Um, I came across your website and um, thought of some improvements. Improvements um, largely relating to uh, video content, content. Uh, video is a great way to, um, uh, to showcase your services and also professionalism. Professionalism. I'd obviously go through and spell check all this stuff after. Um, then I just want to ask a question, the call to action. Is that something you would be interested in having a chat about? Or sometimes I'll use this, and there's been some studies to show that uh, 
um, doing it this way round uh, actually evo evokes more of a response. But would you be against? Would you be against having a quick? Uh, minute call about this question mark look forward to hearing from you hearing from you ross for instance okay so let's just quickly break this back down so um the video is a great way to showcase your services and also professionalism would you be against having a quick eight minute call so there's two things i did there would you be against it against is quite a strong word so no, I wouldn't be against having a call. I'm not necessarily for it, but they're not against it. There's been studies to suggest that that kind of psychology works in getting a response. The other thing is, would you, uh, would you be against having a quick eight minute call about this? Eight minutes is just a bit of a weird number. If you're gonna say 10 minutes, they know it's gonna be longer than 10 minutes. If you say five minutes, there's no way you're doing a call in five minutes. If you say 15 minutes, it takes a bit, of, bit too much of their day away from them. Certainly if you said half an hour, they're not gonna jump on a half hour call with you. If you said quick call, they're gonna be wondering how long that is. So there's a nice little psychological thing with there, but definitely with email marketing, always A-B test different things, try out new strategies. But you'll notice overall, we've kept it really short. The only thing if I had a portfolio as well that I'd include in this is like, please feel free to take a look at some of our work here, um, all the types of things we can do. But remember, we don't wanna be selling to them really from day one. We just wanna know, are you interested? Are you free for a call? And that strategy is something we've used for years to help land hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of clients. If you guys think that this could be a little bit time consuming, then I have a mini course available as part of the Academy. It's $47 and it's called our Ultimate Leads Formula. It guarantees that you'll find over a thousand leads for your business so that you can very quickly generate a whole list of contact details. You can avoid wasting time going through it the long way and therefore you can just send out email after email because ultimately, unfortunately, sales is a numbers game. And now I'm gonna show you some ways of making those numbers numbers even better through using marketing strategies because if you can get someone to come to you rather than you going out to them, then you're gonna have a much better chance of landing that sale. I'll leave a link to the Ultimate Leads formula in the description below if you feel like that's something you wanna go and check out and think it would save you a bunch of time. If you want a quick way to lock in five years of good luck, then all you need to do is press that subscribe button. We would really, really appreciate it. I don't want you guys missing out on the latest content and tricks and tips, so make sure you're subscribed to get the most amount of value and make sure you smash 2023. So you've got a business that looks professional. You now know how to find clients and how to approach them so you can start to make more sales. You're gonna be using networking because in 2023, that's gonna be super important to building up client relationships and making more sales. Now, how do we attract more people into your business? Having the ultimate marketing strategy really comes down to two things. One is your customer avatar. The second is trends. So first of all, with your customer avatar, you need to know who you are speaking to and what kind of things that they connect with. This is all about what's happening inside your customer's head. This is something I neglected, by the way, for, for a couple of years. And I really realized its importance and the power it has on your business and how much easier it is to connect with your audience when you have this. So my advice would be, if you wanna smash 2023, then don't put this off. I'm gonna give you some tips at the very end of this video where we'll work out your whole plan of action. But I want you to really think about who is your ideal customer? What kind of industries do you want to be working in or what do you want to focus on? and just analyze what is it that they do. Your customer avatar represents what and who your ideal customer is. What do they do at the weekends? What kind of demographics do they fall into? How old they are? Uh, what kind of things are they satisfied by? Do they want a promotion in their job? Are they the owner or the, of the business or are they a marketing manager? Who is that person that you're talking to? Because if you don't have that information, it becomes very hard to create a marketing strategy. And if you're speaking to everyone, then you're pretty much speaking to no one. So this is gonna help you work out your niche a little bit more and it's gonna help you connect with those businesses a lot better so that they come to you. And if someone's coming to you, then generally, they've seen a bit of your content and that leads me on to the trend section so my advice is 
don't overwhelm yourself with all of these social media platforms. Go with the one that you spend the most amount of time on and that you know inside out. It also helps if your customer avatar aligns with that. If your customer avatar is, let's say, 60 year old plus people, then maybe you might wanna think about Facebook and Instagram a little bit more. If your client avatar is a bit younger, then maybe you wanna think about um, a younger demographic, particularly on TikTok. So think about that, but start to focus on one particular platform. Now, the reason that trends are important is because if we're not talking about paid advertising when you're paying Facebook or you're paying TikTok to push your content out there, which is very, very powerful, by the way, but I won't get into that now. If you're doing it organically, you want it to get picked up and have the widest reach you possibly can and start to connect with those audiences. So this is where it comes back to your portfolio. You need to be pushing out the content that you want to attract. So you push out high profile projects, you're gonna attract high profile businesses. If you push out uh, business overview videos, you're gonna attract business overview services. If you put out product videos, you're gonna attract product type businesses. But try and jump on some trends so that your content gets pushed further and wider and really spend a lot of time if you can focusing on that client avatar ask yourself all of those questions what are those people doing what do they enjoy doing where are they hanging out at the evenings what social media platforms do they use what type of things do they like to see what would they like to see from you would they like to see behind the scenes content? Would they like to see finished products? Would they like to see explosions and big crazy stuff? Or would they like to see very elegant and luxurious stuff? Think about that and that's gonna really help you develop a marketing strategy that will assist your sales literally 10 times as much. Before I provide some ultimate value on your vision and positioning and how we develop your roadmap for 2023, we just need to quickly talk about your network. This is gonna be your support network because if you do all of these other steps correctly, you have a professional business, you do the sales outreach strategies correctly and you then also start to attract customers because you're putting out the right types of content that connect with your client avatar, then you're gonna be very busy and you're gonna have a load of work. And what I hate seeing is people who say to customers, I'm really sorry, I can't do that day because I'm on holiday, or I can't do that day because I'm busy. And the client has to go elsewhere. You need to develop a support network, a network of freelancers that can work with you to help you grow your production company and help you grow your business. Because I'd much rather give a piece of work to a freelancer or a friend and have the, the client deal with me and I deal with them, then it goes elsewhere. Because people think, oh, if I give it to a, a subcontractor though, if I give it to a freelancer, they might take my work. Well, there's a small risk of that. You can put a contract in place, but there's a bigger risk of the client never coming back to you. If that client says, I'm really sorry, Ross, we need you to do this date. And if you can't do that date, we'll have to find someone else. They find someone else and they do a better job, they're gonna have a much better client relationship, they're gonna keep going back to them, so you've missed out on the work altogether. Try and make sure all of your work flows through you. And a way that you can do this really effectively is by posting in community groups. Um, in the academy, we actually have a private group where we all collaborate. We've passed tens of thousands of dollars of work within that group. But you can find uh, some free open groups on Facebook and start to network within those groups. Say, hey, are there any filmmakers in here that would like to connect in the, you know, in the uh, in the UK, in the London area, in uh, California, in San Francisco, in Canada, wherever? You know, start to connect with local businesses. Ask them. Would you mind me just making a note of how much you charge and have you got a couple of links to your website and work? If you can create a document that starts to document, you know, James, he's $500 and this is his work. This is Phil, he's $10,000 and this is his work or whatever, you kind of get the idea. We call that a freelancer matrix. It's a spreadsheet of freelancers that when I've got a project on, I can open it up and I can be like, right, I've got a project budget of $500. Who's $500? Okay, James and Phil and Jason. Okay, so let's open them up. Okay, Jason's the best, let's ask Jason. Jason, are you free? No, I'm not, okay. Okay, uh, Phil's the next best uh, in terms of quality. Phil, are you free? Yeah, I am, okay, great. 
So that freelancer matrix is gonna help you grow at a rapid rate. Uh, but if you don't have it in place beforehand, it becomes a little bit harder. But please promise me in 2023, you won't be saying no to clients. You'll, you'll do the work and just outsource it to a subcontractor. And you can be transparent about that. No need to be shy. When I started out, I used to really feel like, oh my God, they're gonna think I'm an idiot because I'm outsourcing it. Maybe I'll, I'll lie to them and tell them that I employ this person. Don't do that. Just say, hey, I'm not available for that, but I've got a really good friend who will do a great job. I can, I can put him in touch if you're happy or um, I'm happy to handle the project and he'll be the person doing your shoot. Is that okay? 99% of the time, the client's gonna be like, yeah, that sounds great, Ross, no problem at all. If you've watched this far, then I guess you're trying to start your own production company or you're trying to take your production company to that next level. And my next tip is gonna help you smash 2023. But if you have found some value throughout this video, and I'm guessing if you're still here, then that's the reason why, then please press the subscribe button. Like 80% of people aren't subscribed and it pains me because I feel like if this video doesn't connect quite so well, the next one will. And there's so much value on this channel and we've helped so many filmmakers make good progress and steps within their business to grow to the next level. So please press the subscribe button. It's completely free to do so. So take a second now to do that for me. I'd appreciate it. Vision and positioning and ultimately leading on to how we develop our roadmap for 2023. This is an interesting topic for me because this is something I'm revisiting right this second. We become a little bit lost in our business over the years and I had a business plan, I had all of these things and things have just simply changed. The type of work we want to do has changed. And you notice I said the type of work we want to do. That's because the type of work we're currently doing is great and we love working with our clients but it's not 100% of the time the type of work we want to do. So the question is, how do we get the work we want to do. And that all comes down to the vision, knowing what that is to begin with, and then your positioning. Why aren't we having those conversations now? How do we position ourselves so we have more of those conversations? And ultimately, this is gonna come down to your goals for 2023, and I'll, I'll help you set those, and then how we're going to actually achieve those things. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run a very quick exercise. I want you to imagine, it's December 2023. You've had your best year ever and Christmas time is fast approaching and you really couldn't be happier in life. You've got a great work-life balance. You've landed so many new clients and it's just been such a successful year. Everyone thought at the start you were, you were ambitious, but you've managed to far exceed your own expectations. As a result, you look up and you open your eyes and you're at an award ceremony and you're about to be presented with an award. What is that award? What is the award that you would want to win at the end of next year? What defines your goals? Maybe it's the fastest growing agency. Maybe it's the award for turning over more than $100,000. Maybe it's an award for the most inspiring piece of content. Maybe it's an award for the most creative content produced. Have a little think about what that award could be. What does success look like for you at the end of next year? Imagine yourself in that situation. This might take some time. You might wanna take some time away from this video to do that. Don't click off just yet. But think about that because if you don't have a vision of where you're going, it becomes very, very hard to know if you're on the right track or not. We run this same exercise and we've now started to focus on engaging emotional content and that's what we're looking at. Now that might be different from you. For you, it might be, and this was for me when I started out, the, I wanted to hit 100,000 turnover. That's what I wanted to do. Then I started to create those financial things and that's completely fine to do, but just have a goal. Then we need to work out your positioning. Your positioning is the analysis of where do you fit in? A tool we use to help us understand this is a uh, competitor analysis. We look at businesses we want to be like, we aspire to be like. Now for you, if that's financial, or whether that's uh, creative content or the type of work you do or anything like that, or even if you're starting out, this might seem so far-fetched, but I promise you this is gonna make a huge difference to your businesses. So think about who do you aspire to be like and what are they doing? How are they positioned? What do their websites look like? Start to think about the type of content they produce and how they attract their audiences. Once you have that, you have a very strong line of this is where I'm trying to get to. 
here are other people that are already there and now we build your roadmap. And your roadmap keeps you ultimately accountable. Now, within the Perspective Academy, and this isn't a plug for this at all, we guarantee your next client in 30 days, or you get a full refund, no questions asked. And the reason we can do that is because it simply comes down to accountability. We have accountability coaches that work with you for that 30 days to make sure you're on the right track and keep yourself accountable because we know results will come if you follow our proven strategy. And 2023 for you is going to be no different. In order to achieve your goal, you're going to need to keep yourself accountable. So let's jump over to the MacBook and I'll quickly show you how we do that. So this is going to be your roadmap for 2023. It's not too glamorous, but it doesn't need to be. It just needs to do the job. So first of all, what we were just saying about your vision, what is your target for 2023? Let's say for argument's sake, that is a $50,000 or $50,000 target for some of you it might be just to land your dream client or th or work for five more new clients or maybe that is something a little bit bigger whatever your target is put it at the top as a constant reminder then we're going to just simply work out how do we get there and what are the tasks that we need to do to keep ourselves accountable so let's say for instance if your target is fifty thousand dollars pound or whatever and you um, currently charge, a th we'll keep the numbers nice and round, you currently charge a thousand dollars per video project. So maybe one day filming, one day editing is a thousand dollars. You need to do 50 projects, okay? So that's not too many projects, that's, that's relatively achievable at those rates. Now maybe you're charging a lot less, etc. but these are some good numbers to run. So realistically, you're going to need, if one client comes back to you twice in a year, you're going to need 25 clients, okay? So you're going to want to make sure that through sale, uh, from January to April, you're very heavily focused on sales, very heavily. And in order to do that, we can start jotting down a few things. So let's start with sign up to a network event we spoke about it earlier it's going to be a great opportunity okay email 1000 businesses sales is a number game you're going to need to email a lot of them and remember to chase them up and so on and so forth like i said you might be thinking wow thousands a lot well if you use like an ultimate leads formula or some kind of generation then it's way quicker for you so you don't need to worry about that too much you pretty much it automates your sales process so you don't have to spend too much time on it. So send an uh, email a thousand businesses. We're going to attend three trade shows, so on and so forth, okay? So we can start to break that down. Now out of this, I would expect to get a couple of new clients. And then again, we can apply that for February, March, etc. as we continue going on. Now, obviously, your projects will change as well. So for us, uh, uh, one year we actually said, well, at April time, we are going to introduce a new product. And for us, that was going to be having a drone. So we would then charge an additional $200, $500 or whatever for having a drone there. So even though the person going is the filmer and the drone pilot, we would put uh, another additional amount on top of that to cover the costs of the drone and setting up and so on and so forth. So now we're looking to increase the overall spend per client, which is gonna help us get us closer to that 50,000 target, okay? You might also want to look at your referrals and things like that and start to really break this down even further. If you're absolutely starting out at a beginner, your January your January target might even be to uh, work for five new companies, um, and uh, you know uh, on the free uh, on the, the free to fee model, or something like that. The reason that this is so important, and even. Uh, the reason that this layout is so important is because it's simple. It's easy to understand what do you need to do in order to hit your target? 
because if you fill this all the way out, all the way through to December, and you get to December and you haven't hit your target, I guarantee it's because you haven't done something on here. I guarantee it's because you fell off because you didn't keep yourself accountable. Or if you've done everything and you haven't hit your target, then chances are then you probably missed the point of this or you did this incorrectly, which is why if you spend a bit of time doing it right, you wanna make this difficult but you still want to have that enjoyment level. And by going through this, you can be like, okay, well, I can email a thousand businesses. I can use some automation software. So that only takes maybe one day a week. Um, sign up to a networking event. I can do that right this second. Three trade shows. There's probably a hundred different trade shows going on in your area all the time. So you can type that in and you can start to commit to these things. And again, depending on what your target is, maybe your target is to sign up five new clients onto a year long contract. If that sounds like something that's gonna benefit your business, then this is gonna look slightly different, right? So you can adapt this, but if you don't have your vision, if you don't know how you're positioned compared to uh, how other people are who are currently in your ideal scenario, then it makes it very hard to set out your roadmap for 2023. If you take this element, do this properly, you're going to have success, there's no doubt about it. In business, you are going to make mistakes. And I'm not one of those people who's gonna sit here and tell you about my successes all the time because you only learn so much from someone who's been successful you'll learn way more from someone who's experienced hardship and failures. So if you found enjoyment out of this video, please press the subscribe button and join our community. And if you wanna hear about some of those failures that I've had over the years, then click on this video right here. It's how we lost over $150,000 worth of clients in the space of a month. And it's what I'm doing to get my business back on track. Completely transparent, open and honest, so that you don't have to make the mistakes I have.